Once again, people are going crazy over this idea that these new digital technologies will replace Revit. However, this is simply not the case. And I think there is just a fundamental misunderstanding in terms of what these tech platforms do and what Revit does and what it's for. Additionally, they're at completely different life cycles in terms of their development. The two fundamental reasons why these tools, at least today, will not replace Revit is both the product life cycle in which these products are in compared to Revit and some of the network effects that happen when a lot of people use one particular tool or platform. And in the past, that has either been AutoCAD and now in the more recent past has primarily been using Revit to get a project built to create construction documents. We need to take a step back and think about what are we actually trying to do? What is the main objective? The main objective here is to get a project built. Now that can be new construction, that can be a retrofit or a tenant improvement, but fundamentally the overarching objective is to get a project built. And along that life cycle of getting a project built, there are a number of tools that a project team would need in order to get that built. So for instance, an architect would need Revit to make those construction documents and hand that off to a contractor to then get built. So traditionally, Revit has taken up a large market share of that process in terms of project delivery. Now, of course, they're going to use presentation tools. They might use Rhino for initial design and schematic ideas. They might use another tool for feasibility. So they might use other tools along the process. And most likely they're using a handful of different tools along that project delivery process. But at least for right now, that primary chunk is going to happen within Revit. Not only that, but we'll get into this in a little bit in terms of the network effect. Other members of the team like structural, MEP, civil, landscape, are either connecting to Revit or have Revit models themselves that are then synced to a main model using BIM 360. So the power of BIM 360 is only going to accelerate into the future and already you have a great market saturation. First, we're going to look into product life cycle. Product life cycle is important to understand because it gives indications in terms of where a particular product sits in its life cycle and its maturity stage. So if you have a newly introduced tool, it's going to take time for that to both expand its functionality and also gain maturity uh, as a product. So it's important to note that most of these tech design platforms that we've been talking about on the channel are mostly in this introductory or potentially growth phase. What that indicates is that it will still take time to fully develop that tool into something that will be useful enough to use in the design process. Different technology platforms will approach that differently. They might do something super niche, do one particular thing really well, and then expand out from there. There's other tools that are going to try to do a number of different tasks and try to accommodate a lot of different functionality and then build that up over time. So each product or tool will take a different approach but the fundamental point here is that most of these platforms are in an introductory stage and still need at least a couple more years to fully develop into a tool that is more feasibly could replace a tool like Revit. Could they start to chip away at the market share or you could even just say the time of an architect that spends in Revit? Yes, I do think that these platforms can either integrate with Revit and start to chip away at that time someone spends in Revit but they are expanding different functionality and are overall still expanding their footprint in terms of who is adopting a BIM technology. The second item to point out here is the network effect. So this is really to point out that it's really challenging to get people to go onto your platform. And it's more challenging than people give credit to. So you think of products like Craigslist. They have made no changes over however many years they have been around. And still people widely use Craigslist because it has that network effect. And that's similar to Facebook as well. And even, even platforms like Twitter are really hard to get away from because it has such a strong network effect. So even if someone is running this platform to the ground, you still see people are still using it because of that network effect. So creating this network effect is really essential for both creating a marketplace 
and just having a broader adoption of a tool. I also really like the way that Jack Dorsey has thought about this in terms of ecosystems and what he's doing with Block. I really like the way that Jack Dorsey has started to think about this in terms of the product block. And so they're thinking about this in terms of ecosystems. So you have both these various ecosystems that people can basically like, you could say like hire a specific service within that ecosystem. And you could also use those ecosystems together and it becomes stronger if those items are integrated. But if you're not happy with one of those services, you can use something else. So for instance, Square, where you're having a point of sale location where you're actually paying for something versus the digital platform like the Cash App, then you also have items that is just for businesses in terms of analytics, so on and so forth. They could also process payroll. So these things can start to integrate and overlap in really creative and interesting ways. And that's really the advantage of having this ecosystem approach, which is you have a lot of services that when they are integrated together, they are stronger. And when it comes to Revit, they want to be that platform that's going to integrate these items. And that's somewhat why they've created such a bad API, because they don't want people to take this model and create platforms outside of Revit. They want people to create these functionalities within Revit itself. As of right now, Revit both has that network effect, meaning everyone is using Revit, and it, that, and it therefore makes it a lot more advantageous for a structural firm or an MEP firm to also use Revit because they can integrate with the architect's workflow really well. However, moving forward, web-based tools tend to be more collaborative. They tend to be more open to APIs and integrating other people's tools and analysis platforms with one another. And so you could see this chipping away of these web platforms that start actually working together. So from product conception to product delivery, to management, to so on and so forth, um, you could start to see that whole life cycle and how these products start to fit together. There have been cases where someone's tried to tackle all of those items at all at once, which was the uh, Katera platform, which completely failed. So that's very challenging to try to take on that entire ecosystem at once because architecture and building is complicated. But for right now, we're still seeing that this network effect or this ecosystem is happening within Autodesk, specifically like the BIM 360 and then these other cloud platforms that, they're, that Autodesk is developing. And then these niche tools that sort of happen around that process to help that along. But it's still at some point going back to Revit to process that documentation until we get a tool that optimizes for both the design modeling and has the documentation with the capability of integrating both structural MEP, landscape, and civil, it's going to be really hard to replace a program like Revit. It's most likely going to be more of a gradual transition from Revit to Autodesk platform like Autodesk BIM 360 with its cloud services. And you could kind of think of Revit users. There will always be some Revit users, some like they're, they're still CAD users, but then more and more people will migrate to these web services to, to deliver that product. And Autodesk is already offering things like Forma or formerly SpaceMaker to do more of that early design feasibility you could see a service that would then more focus on the documentation aspect to bring these items and services under one umbrella, uh, which is like these cloud platforms that Autodesk will provide. That's just what I'm seeing. And of course, there's always innovative products that come out there and take a specific market share and then grow from there. But we will see what happens. I'm curious what you think and if you've seen any tools out there that you think have a lot of promise in terms of being useful for people. So let me know in the comments below. I'm curious what your thoughts are.